Hey everybody, it's Chris with Xano, and today I'm going to talk to you about Xano Webflow Authentication. In the last several Webflow videos that we've uploaded, it, this has been one of the most popular requests. Is okay, this is cool. I love being able to display form data on the next page and be able to call my Xano APIs and things like that. But how do I do this with authentication? If you've watched the other Webflow videos that we've posted recently, a lot of these concepts are going to be very familiar to you already. This is not going to be a super elaborate example, but it's going to give you the building blocks to get you started. I'll show you how I have the custom code implemented inside Webflow, the authentication endpoints in Xano, and I'll give you a demonstration of what it does and how to set it up for yourself. If you have any questions, make sure to let us know in the comments down below, but otherwise, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Webflow. Very simple project here with just a login form. Now I'm not using a Webflow native form this time. And this button is not a normal form submit button. What this button does instead is it calls a function in our custom code. You could probably make this work with a native form. I just chose to do a standard embed instead because it's a little bit easier to implement. So what we're doing first is we're preventing any sort of default form handling from Webflow. And then we are defining our Xano input. This is a very similar set of code to our previous video on using fetch to send data to Xano from Webflow and Bubble. Very similar code example here. So we're sending the email value from the form and the password value from the form. And then we're using fetch to call our Xano API. We're sending that email and password to Xano. And then we are returned a response. Now this is kind of where some of the new stuff is coming into play. What do we do with that response once we receive it? All we're doing initially is we're just logging that in the developer console in the browser. You don't have to do this. It's just more for debugging purposes, just so you can kind of get a live view of what's happening. And then what we're doing is we're checking that response. So we're defining a variable based on whether the Xano response contains the key labeled auth token because our API returns a key called auth token when the username and password is correct. And then we have an if else statement. We're checking to see if that has key value is true or false. If it's false, we just give a little pop-up that says, hey, this is an invalid username or password, and then nothing happens. Now, if this value is true, if we do have that auth token, if that auth token key is present in the Xano response, then we get another pop-up that says we have an auth token. And then we are taking that auth token and we are storing it in local storage. If you're not familiar with what local storage is, it's kind of like a cookie, but not at the same time. I won't bore you with the technical explanation of this, but I will leave a link down in the description below. So we store that auth token in local storage, and then we redirect to the next page. Now on the next page, you can see again, very simple. It just says you are now logged in and there's a big empty box here. Why is this here? We'll go over that in a second. Let's take a look at the custom code. So the first thing I want to do on this page is I want to essentially double check for that auth token. We check to see if that local storage dot auth token is null. If that auth token is not present, if it is null, then we get an alert that says you are not logged in. So we get a little pop up it says you are not logged in. And then we are redirected back to the login page. If the auth token is present, then we call our function that talks to Xano. So this function is sending a get request to the auth me endpoint, which we'll go over in a second. It's sending the authorization token in the headers of that request. And then all we're doing is we're taking that response. Again, we're kind of working off of that same base fetch code that we released previously. So this is going to look pretty familiar. We're logging the Xano response to the developer console. Again, you don't have to do this it's just for debugging purposes. And then we're using document.getElementById. And we're selecting the user element, which is this empty paragraph right here, which I've given the ID of user. And we're replacing the text content with the content of Xano response, which is the response that we get when we call this auth me endpoint. It's just the user record. That sounds like a lot, I know. Let me show it to you in action. 
So here we are on our published site. I also have the developer console open so you can take a look at those messages being logged to the console as we proceed. So let's do an incorrect username and password first. So I'm gonna say my email is chris at email.com, but my password is wrong. Submit that. You can see we get a 403 error from our Xano endpoint and we get our alert that says invalid username or password. And in the developer console, you can see we have a 403 error. What is that error? That error is access denied invalid credentials. Let's go ahead and provide the correct password. You can see we now get an alert that says we have an auth token. You can see our auth token has been logged to the console. So once we hit okay, we will be redirected to the new page and that paragraph is just filled in with the user record that's returned from calling the API in Xano. And you can see that's also been logged in the console as well. Now, what happens if I try to access this user profile page and I'm not logged in? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to clear my local storage. So local storage is empty now. We have no auth token and I'm gonna refresh this page. You can see it says you are not logged in. I know it still says now logged in. That's just because I have this hard coded into the page. You can obviously have whatever you want here, but the important thing is the alert. It says you are not logged in. We hit okay and we get redirected right back to the login screen. So what's really important here? The most important thing is that our content the user record that's being delivered, that content is not gated by just JavaScript, right? So as you may be aware, in some other authentication solutions that work with Webflow, that data that's on your page is still on your page. It's just hidden from a user that's not logged in. They turn off JavaScript and they see that data without being logged in. That's obviously an issue. This example is going to be for people that want to serve certain content from Xano. And because that content does not live on your page until it's served from Xano, until we get that proper authentication token so we can return that data to you, it's a much more secure solution. So in Xano, we're working with two endpoints today. We're working with the auth login endpoint. This is just taking in our email and our password. It's getting the user record, it's checking the password, and it's creating an authentication token, and then it is returning that authentication token. Now our user profile page is calling this endpoint, the AuthMe endpoint. What does AuthMe do? This is just an example of an authenticated request in Xano. You can see we have authentication enabled, which means that when this endpoint is called, you need to provide an authentication token to actually complete the request. If you don't, it won't run. All we're doing in the function stack is we're just getting the user record and we're returning it. Very simple. Now, I'm not gonna walk you through building those endpoints and I'll tell you why. They're already here ready for you to use right away. If you don't have these endpoints already, let's say when you opened up your workspace, you didn't enable any sort of authentication, all you do is go to add API endpoint, just click on authentication, and here are your three endpoints right here. We have login, sign up, and the auth me. So those are ready for you to implement right away. Now, the one thing we haven't gone over yet is users signing up. You can see in my project, I don't have a sign up page. That's because we're gonna build it live right now. I actually want to build the sign up page live for you right now, just to give you an idea of how this actually looks in terms of implementation. So let's actually just start with duplicating this home page and let's call it sign up. Okay, so let's change a couple of things around here. Let's take a look at our Xano database. What does our user database have? We have name, email, and password. So let's add a field to this form. Just going to copy and paste these here. Name and name. Perfect. Save that. So we have name, email, and password in our sign up form. So let's walk through modifying this code to work for you. The first thing I need to do is I need to add a new value to my Xano input. This is the data that is being posted to the endpoint that I'm calling. 
So I need to add name. And to get that name value from the input, we're going to use documents.getElements by ID. And that ID is just name.value. So now we're getting the email, the password, and the name. Now we need to replace this URL with the endpoint that we're calling. So let's go to Xano. Let's go to our API. And let's get this sign up endpoint URL. I'm just going to click this button right here. Back to Webflow and let's paste that. So now we have our auth sign up endpoint. So now you can also see that this sign up endpoint returns an auth token just like the login endpoint. So we really don't need to do much here at all. We should probably change this handling a little bit because we're not really checking for a valid username and password. We're just adding a new user record. We would probably want to build in something that would uh, check for a duplicate user and handle that in some way. So how would that work exactly? Well, what happens if we run this in Xano and we try to add a user that already exists? Let's see what happens. So you can see we get an error, access denied, this account is already in use. So we need our code to react to that. I'm gonna keep it very simple for now. All I'm going to do is I'm going to change this alert text from invalid username or password to user already exists. The reason this works is because all we're doing here is we're checking for that auth token to be returned. If that auth token isn't there, we can put whatever kind of error we want here. It's more of a catch-all. Um, another error that you might receive from this endpoint is if you're trying to set a password that doesn't meet the password rules that you've set in your user table, you could modify this code to check for a specific code here and give the uh, error that corresponds with that. So let's go ahead and save this. And that really should be it. Let's go ahead and publish. And let's open it up. And let's sign up a new user. I'm going to sign up Sean. My email is sean at email.com. And I've got my password. Let's submit. You can see we actually get an error because that password doesn't conform to our password rules in our table. So uh, let's fix that. Let's make this a little bit more complicated. And you can see we have an auth token. We'll go to OK. And you can see we're now logged in. And there is our brand new user record that we just created using the signup endpoint. So that is very basic user authentication between Xano and Webflow. This is the building blocks for you to get started in building your own custom authentication solution. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down below. You can also talk to us on support chat inside Xano or on the Xano community. All the links you need to get started with this example today will be down in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next one.